Hello. <clears throat> so nice. So nice to begin the day with a woo. Um, maybe, there's, maybe we can work out something where you're hanging around to woo. Because you get up sometimes and you need a woo and there's no crowd. There is a cat that does not care. Uh, welcome, uh, each and every one of you, to PAX Unplugged 2019. An intimate gathering. Uh, thank you so much for uh, prioritizing uh, my guest uh, instead of uh, slavering over the latest board games from Essen. I hope that some of them are still there uh, by the time you get to the expo floor. Uh, until, until such time as you are released, um, let's fill that time with a Socratic dialogue uh, about board games with my guest, Eric Lane. This is Eric Lane. I want to make sure, every, I want to make absolutely sure that everybody knows that this is the same person I was talking about before. I almost tripped. <laughs> oh my God. Well, and I also, I, I was, it was indicated to me, already things are going great. Um, it was indicated to me that you'd be coming up this side, and that's, it's fine, I, I'm not even mad, but I, I, did, I felt the, the hairs on my neck rise, and I, just, I, knew that there, I knew that there was someone there. I was gonna come that way, but there were no stairs. I was like, I'll jump, <laughs> I'll do it. Just like from the ground to the stage. Yeah, I just do the, the Miles Miranda. Like, okay, now, wouldn't work. I, listen, I came up with a great way to do it. Uh, a great plan. I'm just going to let you know about my plan, and then you tell uh -oh. me if you think it's appropriate. Um, morally, uh, spiritually. Um, I looked at the list of all the games that you made, and it's, it maps in a very robust way to the games that I own. And, like, I'll have games that I think are not by you, but they are also by you. And I was trying to figure out, like, how do I even, how do I even fucking start with that? Like, hi. Well, no, yes. I mean, I know that part. Okay. <clears throat> I know about the hi. Oh, hello, Eric Lane. Hello, hello, sir. Yeah. Now, because the truth is, is we got together last night to sort of talk about like how we would get down, and then we talked for like an hour and a half, and so we might be done. Yeah, it's true. I'm sorry, you, you <laughs> missed the best part of it. We were like. We talked a little bit about games, mostly politics and yeah. social issues and, it was, uh, it was and a, bears. It was a wide-ranging... The topics were wide-ranging. Um, in terms of your catalog, I mean, is it... Once it gets to a certain level, like once your catalog contains a certain number of games, does it become an OVRA? Like, like what's the OVRA threshold? Like for works. I'll let you know when I hit it and when you define over for me. <laughs> it's, I think it means egg. Um, I'm not sure. So uh, when, let, let, I'll, I'll let you know when I design the egg. Yes. And I'll warn you not to buy it. Not this one. So, but in terms of your, in terms of your uh, catalog, like which ones, are the, which ones are the ones that for you uh, jump out. Like for me, there's they exist in a range. Like I'm not even sure if I'm not even sure if you have a thing. Like sometimes designers have a thing, and like I can sort of see the thing. But you've made so many different kinds of games that I mean I don't see the through line. Is there a through line for you? Like that runs through all of them? I would hope that they're all made by me. Well, that's uh, an, uh, in, in uh, some combination. No. Aside from the name on the box, which is there, uh, and sometimes it's you, and then it's sometimes it's also another cool person. Right. Sometimes it's a deviant art style collabo. Um, but which are, which are the ones that like that sort of like stick up for you? Like which are the ones that are really meaningful to you that you've put out? I mean, uh, so. I'm not giving you a line, right? But oh but no, I give got, me give me lines. I gotta say, I mean, I gotta say that the uh, I am. They're all kind of special to me, and they're all they all represent a very 
um, long and painful yes. process, right? Oh, okay, and that's that, that's why they're that's why you can't they they, they never become uniform because they each represent some unique torment. <laughs> oh, I mean, there are some I like better than others. There's no question. Okay, right? good. But, but the um, generally speaking, I try very much when when I have the control. I try very much not to publish something or or, uh, or see something through to completion unless uh, unless at some point in the process it, uh, of designing and developing playtesting, it scares the living shit out of me. And really? Like, so it, uh, you actually run toward the fear? Oh, absolutely. Wild. I mean, I'd love to say like all romantically, like, yes, I pursue fear, I am a great artiste and whatever, but, but no, I mean, it's, game design is scary. It's scary and it's, uh, it's solitary and universal at the same time. You're making, right. you're, you're making a form of art that um, is going to be, we're, it's going to be consumed to a depth where all the hours that you put into it will be replicated in the real world in five seconds, right? So, like, it doesn't matter how much I put into it. I'm scared now. You should be. Just listening to this. You have to understand, I mean, I make JPEGs. Like, <clears throat> you know, I put three of these motherfuckers out a week, and it's like, I mean, I'll go back into the, I'll go back into the archive. Like, Pinderkey just turned 21, which is bizarre. Yeah. Right? But when I go back through that, and it's like we had an opportunity to look through at like strips that people really enjoyed or were meaningful to them in the archive. And then if you go like forward or back one, I do not remember making that strip at all. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's happened too. That's no happened shit. Too. Um, that, I mean, because there's like a whole box, like it's a JPEG, and it's like I made three that week. You're saying that you can make an entire product. Well, yeah, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm a pen and paper designer uh, primarily, but I've worked in, uh, I worked in video games for about five years. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, the one that, the main one I'm familiar with, the main ones that you've done that have a digital component are Duelist. That's right. Which I was obsessed with. I'm intensely proud of that game. I still love it. Oh, my um, God, but, it's good. Um, so that was my one great video game experience. Uh, I, I loved it, and the people the, the people I worked with were um, I mean they were all ex Blizzard employees, and um, oh, yeah. so they they had the, they carried that passion forward, uh, and they were all primarily tabletop gamers, and they were they they trusted me with a, this huge digital playground to play in. They said, look look, check out all these really cool assets we built. Make a game out of that. Okay, so it, it was actually backwards. So they, they, they knew how they wanted the game to look, but then they needed, they needed Well, Eric okay, Lang. well, let me tell you. So, yeah. um, and I apologize to my, my pals at uh, uh, Counterplay for the candidness here, but the, so they approached me a while ago. I was, it was out of the blue. Uh, it was Keith Lee who wrote me out of the blue an email. I was like, I know who you are. You work for Blizzard, because I'm a huge Blizzard fanboy. Um, and uh, he, he wrote me and said, like, hey, we, we're work I, I have this uh, new studio. We're working on this really cool new game. You want to have a look at it? I'd be interested in uh, having you consult for it. Uh, it was a game. It was done. Well, oh. It was done, right? Yeah, well, um, video games. It yeah. was video game done, yeah. right? And, uh, it was soft in the middle. The, yes. And perhaps yes. at the it, edges. It was more than a vertical slice, less than a beta. Okay. Right? Um, and uh, so I, I, I played it. Uh, I, pl I tried playing through it, and I was like, this is indeed a game. <laughs> um, uh, but it's, <laughs> uh, it's, but it's really pretty. That this really cool pixel oh, art I style. The, the art. I mean, I'll just sit there and watch. Like whenever they would do card reveals, right? I would just go and watch the idle frames, right, of a card. Yo, oh, yeah. There. I mean, there's so. As a form of recreation, I would do this. Uh, well, we're not far apart on this. Um, uh, it was like uh, working on that game was like Christmas every day. Every time a new uh, oh, Bobber would send well, a new. Well, uh, yeah, they send a bunch of new amazing art, and then you need to figure out like how it mechanically works in the rest of this thing. Like that's right, right. Well, so that was the beginning. So I, I played the game. And I, I told him, well, um, it. it I love your art style, and your lore is amazing. They had a, an entire world book. It was uh, Keith, wild. Is, Keith is a, a amazing visionary when it comes to lore. He could easily have written uh, a novel, a movie. Like the, we should be on Netflix right now. I don't know what we're doing here, um, but the, um, <laughs> sorry, that was a little, is that his voice? That was a little existential. <laughs> but, no, I love it. Um, but I told him. I mean, the, 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 the game is. Uh, I mean, to put it politically correct, it's kind of hot garbage, right? Um, and it's filth. Hmm? Well, no, no. I mean, I wasn't mean. Yeah. 
hot, hot, hot garbage is at least uh, metaphorical, right? Yeah. Um, but they were like, yeah, we agree. Like, wh what would you do? And I was like, I would redesign it from scratch. And I know, I know how video games work. There's no way. And they were like, no, do it. And I was like, oh, OK. Um, so they literally gave me the tool set and said, design this on paper. You don't even, have, don't even look at the code. Just design this on paper the way you would design a game like this. Now, the game, uh, for those of you who don't know much about Duelist, um, uh, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure it's not around anymore, unfortunately, but it's such is the fate of most uh, uh, online trading card games. God, but, it's good. But um, the, the, when, when I looked at the... the when I looked at it, when I looked at what the game was trying to be, right, uh, that's my, the curse of a designer, right? I never see something for what it is. I see for, it, for uh, how it could potentiate, right? Right. Um, I looked at this. I was like, wow, this is like the, the, the thing that popped into my head. I had this dream in my head. I want to make StarCraft the Gathering, right? Ah. Uh -huh. Right? I'm so, stunned. You're there, right? So I was, uh, and I was like, this is StarCraft the Gathering. Uh, and now, of course, it didn't work out that way. The, the, your, your starting point is never your end point. But I was like, this, it's now a bucket list item. Well, no, right? of course, of course. And then essentially, it, it's like a war game in some ways. You have a kind of general character, and mm -hmm. then units are, spawn, units are generated around them the mm -hmm. same way they would be created by a building. Right, yeah. Except for other unique cases where they can be generated outside the, the realm of the individual character. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's a it's resource a management building. game. Jesus. Um, but in the guise of a card game, so we basically had to take all the complexity of, uh, of FPSs and FPSs, of... Uh, RTS? Not, not, RTSs, thank you. I got you. Uh, it's early. Um, it's of, of RTSs and, uh, and card games, which are two of the most complex forms in the world, and dilute it into something that you can play in 10-minute increments. Uh, and so that, that exercise was hugely fun. So I designed the game 100% on paper. Like I, I made a little board, and I was like, if, if I can't translate those mechanics onto a board, um, uh, oh. uh, then it's, it's not playable So for me. So that process was amazing. Um, that, was, uh, that was the one good video game experience I've ever had. Where, what, what, what were we talking about? We're just, we're just having fun. Oh, OK. <laughs> There was a point. This was leading to a point. We're just having a great time. <laughs> there goes the point. You, gotta really, you just got to chill out. Um, no, I mean, basically, we were just talking about your, your ovra, if you will. Oh, my egg. Yeah. We were um, talking about your precious egg and uh, like the, the ones that sort of stood out. And I think that Duelist... It must be one of these. Oh, Duelist has a special place in my heart. I mean, I worked on it for three years. I worked with a fantastic development team, which is entirely, uh, the, the, the pool of developers that I worked with was entirely from the player base. So we recruited um, oh, alpha wild. players up from there. And well, they had, and that's very common in card games now, too. It is to a degree, right? And so, but I was, I was looking for a very, very specific skill set, which was not necessarily top tier tournament uh, competitive. Um, I mean, they were all better than me. I'm terrible at card games uh, as much as I love them. Um, but they, um, but they were more, they were, uh, as they call themselves, uh, very unpretentiously fun engineers, right? And the, the, they were more interested in the emotional journey of a game from beginning to end than the, than the technicality of it, because the, you can learn that on the back end. What's more important is yeah. your, your, your ability to see vision, right? And so they were able to challenge every design I put, uh, that I put forward to, uh, to do what developers do, right? Which is to, to to look at the vision of a game, look at the 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 philosophical and emotional questions you're trying to answer, and make sure that the play of the game actually answers those questions, and then correct when it doesn't. And they were really good at that. So yeah, that was a, a great experience. So uh, the rest I, were not. <clears throat> yeah. What well, do you? you uh, my presumption is that you'd rather not discuss uh, experiences of that kind that had a deeply negative. Oh, sure, I'll talk about them. Well, then that's what we want to hear. Sure. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I'm going to admit names, of course. Um, Fair. Uh, but uh, so for about four years, uh, I think about four years, I worked um, on for Facebook. I worked for DAC Division. <laughs> <laughs> um, I never had, the, uh, never had the pleasure or privilege, actually. Um, uh, very, very politically phrased, right? Yeah. Um, no, I've been, um, no, I worked for, uh, I was actually working in the Facebook game space uh, oh. for a while. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that you can thank me for like Pantsville and, and Shoeville and all that, <laughs> all, the, all those wonderful innovative games. This is, this is uh, you? You did this? No, no, sweet God, no. <laughs> 
Um, no. Uh, so, but what happened was um, after after Farmville, there was the trifecta: Farmville, uh, Texas Hold'em Poker, and Yoville, um, which were blowing up everybody's feeds on Facebook. You guys remember those, right? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, do you enjoy them? Nope. Yeah, all right. So, um, obligation and regret engines is what we call them in game design today. Right? Wait, 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 wait. Right. <laughs> um. When you say we, this is a recognized piece of terminology. No, Obli no, it's, it's really the royal we. But, okay. <laughs> but, like, I mean like, the Eric Lang community. Hashtag spread the word. Yeah. Um, um, obligation and regret engines? Yeah, it's totally what they are. Uh, I mean, I don't disagree. I've just never heard it boiled down in such a robust way. I mean, you have to. That's what we do. Well, I mean, you have to. No, I, and, and God bless you. <clears throat> because I remember there was a very, there was a really interesting, uh, when I say this stage, I mean, this stage is a concept, right? So this stage exists in well, we're at this part of the five different, just <laughs> expand your mind. Is Philly okay. a legal town? Let's find out. I'm way too sober um, for this. <clears throat> here. So um, this stage, obviously we have multiple stages at different shows. Mm -hmm. And um, Warren Spector, I mean, I remember when this stuff was really starting to pop. And Warren Spector basically said that games either become mainstream or they are annihilated. Any art form, games included, mm -hmm. either, become, either gets embraced by the mainstream or uh, withers away, essentially. Oh, yeah. As He's a, a wise of, man. As you a kind be of talking to him. As a, as a kind of social experiment. I'd... Beep, boop, 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 boop. Get no, rid of Eric. I yeah, it's like, listen, we, we still got 41 minutes. We can salvage this. All right. Um, <laughs> no, no. Um, but, and I always thought that that was interesting, but the proxy he chose to, the proxy he chose to contain that idea were pretty mercenary free-to-play games as an example of gaming and this medium being, you know, recognized and elevated by the mainstream. Right. And I didn't disagree with the underlying concept. I thought, I mean, I thought about it for 10 years, so it must have made some kind of impression. Yep. But is, is a free-to-play game, like, is an obligation and regret engine really the expression of this no. that represents, like, our, you know, pylon that we build that future generations can look... I don't think no, that no, that's No, 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 sweet God. Though. Let's not be that cynical. No, no, right? no. Like, no, no. So I'm not talking about a very, very specific subset of games. Um, yeah. Uh, they, I mean, they are free-to-play games, yes. But they... Um, they what they became is actually such a delta from what I think they meant to be, uh, which is part of where uh, the, 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 the tale of regret that I will weave for you at yeah. this moment. But, but, uh, so I got into Facebook games wide-eyed and enthusiastically, right? Because, I mean, think about it. Picture it. Um, oh, yeah. You're, you're all on Facebook. Is everybody on Facebook? No? Oh, my God, I am so old. All right, so Facebook is a, is a platform. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, um, listen to this. I'll handle this, Mr. Lang. Well, hold on. Invented Facebook by a guy with really cool hair. Yeah. Super cool hair. The best hair. <laughs> Facebook is a kind of web. All right, please continue. All right. So um, for a while, uh, in, the, in the heyday of Facebook, whatever that may be, um, there, were, um, there, there, there came out this game called Farmville, and um, that was an attempt by a, a small upstart studio, Zynga, to... Um, I mean, from their point of view, to monetize, yes. But really, it was supposed to be a social experiment. It was the idea, the way I choose to think of it, because I'm an incurable optimist, is to, uh, to make a game that is essentially a purely social game that, has, that follows a lot of tabletop norms, right? So you can play it, a, uh, except you can play it asynchronously. I'm going to take my turns. I'm going to build my little, uh, my little area. You're going to build up your little area. And we're going to play this cooperatively among my entire social graph, Without a be, uh, as an infinite game, right? Be, uh, without a beginning, a middle, or an end, I can play it forever. So, the, uh, so this version, like this, this is the optimism. Like what you've described is so beautiful. It sounds so great. Like right? I can see, I can see these tall chrome buildings, and there's like grav cars 
just traveling lazily around the city. Like this is an sure. incredible realm you've described. Well, right, and and the thing, and because of this medium, right? Um, uh, because of this medium, it, the, there's so much cool shit you could do, right? So much. I mean, uh, I, I, to my in in uh, one of my biggest regrets is that we never really uh, that we never actualized any of this. But, uh, we collectively uh, that the, 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 this is a medium in which you could play games, again, asynchronously and piecemeal, um, and to any degree of, uh, any degree of, of dedication that you want, uh, any, on that spectrum, right? Like the, we'll talk about the hardcore versus uh, uh, casual spectrum later, because it's a dirty words, and we'll get back to that, but <laughs> um, as, you could play this game as, as casually or as hardcore as you want, and still, and be meritocratically judged among your entire uh, social graph. You can. Uh, it eliminates the number one point of friction of tabletop games. What's the worst? What's the worst part about tabletop games? You need to make an appointment with your friends to play. Yeah, I was, I was right? going to say other people, but yes. Right. Well, <coughs> we're we're both right. <laughs> we're both right. You're you. You're a prince among men, Jerry. Um, <laughs> so. Um, anyway, so like, yeah, the, I mean, doesn't that sound so fucking cool? I want to like, live, I want to go I, to there. I wanted to make that game. I, I want to, I was like, uh, my head exploded, right? I was there's like, so I, many ways, I'm, and then the, there's so many themes. Of course. So I worked for, uh, when, when Farmville got big, and then Yoville, and then uh, Basketville, or whatever. The, 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 Fish what, Town. <laughs> Fish Town. Yeah, oh no, God. We all remember those days. Petville. Um, oh, I'm gonna. Some of this is gonna come out as Tourette's. Uh, it's just gonna series. emerge. Oh, I've, I'm ready. I, I've got some, yeah, trauma from there. But um, when when I started working on this game, I was working with these small upstart studios, right? They were like, like oh, they yeah. that bought into the vision, like, oh yeah, we like we can do so much. Now, of course, these studios are uh, almost always venture capitalist funded, and et cetera, et cetera. And and okay, so so let's. Let's, let's go into that very briefly. Oh, let's do it. <clears throat> so we're just going to put a bookmark in the part where they're venture capitalist funded. They sort of believe in the vision. You're there. Mm -hmm. We're basically looking off the edge of a cliff. Now, I've been known to me, by the way. I was young and stupid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So as near as I can tell, and I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong, but you won't because I'm right. Always. So <clears throat> venture capitalists are essentially people who plant time bombs in companies. Okay. I, I mean, I, venture capital is a kind of terrorism, correct? Are we on candid camera? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm saying that essentially, so you, it sounds like all the pieces are here. And <laughs> except for the fact that a cartoon villain has now lit a fuse, and then you can see this sparking fuse snaking through the company and the ideas and the people who work there, and it's going to something that is eventually going to mean that it has to stop. And it just, I, I mean, all the incentives get really, really aggressive. Right. Right? Um, right. So we're, we're different people, okay. right? <laughs> um, uh, I knew that coming in <laughs> because I was already on stage when you got here. Oh, that's true. That's true. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, come to the right of you here a little bit. Uh, metaphorically well, and physically, Metaphorically right? and literally. <laughs> um, and uh, so, uh, so everything you described makes for a really wonderful uh, comic strip. Yeah, right? um, that's very but, special. Um, but um, so, and I'm not going to say you're wrong, right? But I, I, I'm not. But whether by you heard it. But right. So this is one of those. This is one of those cases of of, of impact. Uh, Trump's intent, right? Yeah. Nobody intends to make a bad game. Nobody. I promise you. There's nobody in any field that's like going out there going like, I want to punish people for playing my entertainment. Like nobody. Nobody <laughs> thinks like that, right? Like. I uh, want to imagine that person, but I think that you're right. Right. No, like, like, <laughs> yeah, it's just... I do not have enough mustache to twirl, right? Like, like no. Like, there, there's there's nobody like that. But. Um, what, what happens where these train wrecks often happen is uh, people come into it for what I would consider the wrong reason, right? You don't get into game design, you don't get into games as a form of entertainment yet, now, yeah. uh, for the sole purpose of making money. This is not a launch pad to your, uh, to your billionaire dumb, right? Co coined that here. <laughs> um, but 
the um, so you, often what happens when people do this as uh, especially starting with a small business as a uh, as a platform for uh, for capital gains they tend to hire people that are money people they're not game people and uh, if you don't get games right I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this right but you either get games or you don't you get fun or you don't. Um, it's not a binary, it's a spectrum, but it sounds cool to say you get fun or you don't. And I got to use this in a lot of meetings with money people and they hate my guts. Um, but uh, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. Yeah. So this, in, one, uh, in one case I was writing an email, I remember, where I was uh, designing uh, uh, Shitville, I don't remember. It was, yeah. uh, I was designing my, uh, I wrote 16, 17 full game design documents and like 12 technical design documents we shipped one, and I'm not telling anybody what it is because it is canceled and is gone. I don't. Uh, my footprints are nowhere to be seen on it. Uh, take that, Facebook. Um, uh, but um, so I, I was writing. I remember I was writing a feature uh, in, in my burnout phase. I was writing a feature like, all right, well, all right. If I if I'm just to if I'm look over my Pavlovian behavioral playbook here, but like if we want to incentivize this type of application oh. and this type oh, of regret. Oh, I can hear it in your voice. But, oh, yeah, yeah, it's my favorite. Well, maybe the best feature to do is something like a slot machine. Why don't we do it? This mimics a slot machine in the following ways, blah, 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 blah. So I uh. sent that in, and the feedback I got from uh, the executive producers were, yeah, but how do we know slot machines are fun? So, I mean... <laughs> This, this would have been the perfect point. There was a baby crying earlier. If that baby would just like... like just like, begin to wail. Now, don't pinch the baby. Yeah. <laughs> we don't but need that. It would have right? been a, 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 Maybe just a little, whoop, whoop, a little bit. Uh, but, so after being like stunned, I... Well, because that, that is a gulf rhetoric cannot bridge. Right. Well, it's like, it's like a studio exec asking you, like, please describe the taste of butter. Right? Like, like, it's fucking butter, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, a, this is a base. This is a, we build, we use butter to start and we build up from there. Right. But we actually have to be able to agree on what is butter. Right. So I, my email response to them was a picture of the Las Vegas skyline. Um, <laughs> um, You're all right, man. <laughs> You're all right. That's pretty funny. Uh, I, do, <laughs> I don't work for that studio anymore. No, um, no, I, I would think not. But that, 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 that pretty much encapsulates what working on digital games was like. Um, it, I still believe, to this day, I believe that um, uh, social games, uh, some, there will be a social gaming platform, I promise you. There, uh, like it, it, may, it may be on, you may find it on Instagram or TikTok or or bit bop or beep boop or whatever like yeah. the kids are playing nowadays old what hmm? old old yeah old. yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's old we should make it let's do it social platform called old old it's only for a, a social platform called okay boomer yeah right <laughs> dot <laughs> exe <laughs> dot e oh my god all right we claim uh, the uh, don't you it's ours <laughs> it's ours I promise you that that that, that this the, the social gaming the the uh, utopia that I describe is yeah. going to bear fruit at some point. It oh. probably won't be through me. It'll be through another generation of less uh, uh, less scarred uh, designers. Yeah. Um, fresh faced. Fresh, uh, fresh face uh, or fresh meat, as some <laughs> studios call them. Um, anyway, uh -huh. the, the, it will happen, and I believe I do really believe that that is a, a future for us. Uh, alas, not today. Yeah. Okay, so that happened, and then what happen. happened with the what happened with the beautiful young team that you worked with, and you had a good design, and there was venture capital. It's like we were right there on the precipice of something evil. Oh, I didn't have a team. I was just a I was just a dude in front of his computer, typing um, away, typing away, making spreadsheets, and and writing manifestos about how we're going to change the world through. Uh, through asynchronous social play without, uh, w with almost zero friction and other jargon like that. Uh, and th the day one was that? Yeah. Day 400 and something was, I'm going to go take a vacation to Singapore and I'm not going to come back to any of these gigs. Goodbye. Uh, no. And you still live in Singapore, correct? Yeah, so I, yeah, but <laughs> let, 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 hold on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 
maybe I skipped the head <laughs> yeah. of the story. It's yeah. like maybe you left and then never did come back. That, the, that is a you tell way cooler stories than I yeah. do. Let's just say that's the truth. <laughs> I led just personal like self exile. So right. My son endeavored to okay boomer me. He endeavored. Yeah, but I. I he, he was just, not. Just he was for, not successful. Just for using endeavored in that particular. Okay, boomer. Like. <laughs> but I had to like explain to him. Well, you know, actually, Generation X is a distinct, is a, is a, a unique cadre, and understand that you know my later adolescence was you know on the internet, and then that makes me a precise subset. And he didn't care about that either. Please, please tell me he okayed Boomer you and oh, dropped no, the mic and thoroughly. walked the hell out of there. And no, you we, went... we, we purchased a mic on, Am on, on Prime Now. Um, and by the time I had finished my speech, the mic arrived and he was able to drop it. Good. So that's the, that's the connected world we live in now, basically. Excellent. So, but you, you had just said something that I think is really interesting, and I suspect that it's also true, but I'd like you to investigate it with me if you could. So... The, the beautiful Chrome City version of the social game that has aspects of a social experiment. We'll call and it Unicornville. Unicornville. Um, Horn Town. Um, so you, <laughs> you, when you were writing it, just because I've had the pleasure of being able to talk to you, I know that you believed that. Oh, yeah. So, 100%. Right? How, if you were going to make a game that did do that, now, can you give us any hallmarks of what that would look like? If you made a game that had as its, ex as, as its purpose the manufacturing of that city at its end. Well, so the, so the interesting thing is I didn't actually have a game, right? I had the, I had you had the, an idea. Well, no, not even that. I had, I had a manifesto for a platform, right? And for a medium, oh, I right? See. So, like, it was... I mean, Jesus God, I'm about to compare myself to Richard Garfield. I'm not Richard Garfield in any way whatsoever. But, um, but like I was like the, I was thinking about like w when Richard Garfield was cons was um, thinking about what the trading card game platform looked like, and he was philosophizing. I assume what that you would just do to caught on fire. I did like instantly, right? right? I was, like, my socks mismatched, and I turned into uh, I just caught fire. That's a Richard Garfield joke for. Uh, I just okay boomered myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Richard Garfield's a brilliant individual, designed Magic the Gathering. He's the reason I have a job and re reason most of us are here. Um, Richard, you're awesome. Um, the, I, was I was trying to think about the medium, the way that I think Richard would have thought of trading card games. How do, what does this mean for gaming? What, what new avenues can we pursue? And that's uh, before I was trying to like, tunnel into any one particular game experience, I wanted to think of this as a platform and as a medium. The thing is, when I thought about it, I was thinking of it as, uh, as native to Facebook. Right, that's where oh, my. Oh, uh, so I was, everything was rooted in that. Everything was rooted there, right? So I, I and I, I started getting a little bit technical and started thinking about like how Facebook, worked, which it doesn't work that way anymore, right? They've, they've, no, no, they actually changed it because of this raft of games in some ways. Well, well, yes, yes. So they were like, Eric, you may not, your utopia must not exist. Mark Zuckerberg came to my house and <laughs> said, "Screw you." <laughs> this is a classic story. Absolutely, classic. So no, uh, um. I wish I could tell you, like, oh yeah, my game would look exactly like this. Uh, take it forth and go home. But like, the, no, it, I, I don't usually think like that when when I'm um, when I'm conceptualizing something like so grand and and insane and foolish as like a new medium. I I spend a lot of time thinking about what the play experience is like and drawing inspirations from outside gaming itself. And then when it comes, then like one day I'll get out of the shower and like this is the game, right? Uh, this is the game that I'm going to launch with, or, or whatever. But right. um, I, I don't know. Like, w w I may get inspired again when a new medium comes out that, sh that r shows the real potential for that, right. or doesn't go away, or doesn't turn out to be really problematic in some other uh, fucked up way. Exactly right. Um, maybe, maybe. For now, board games are awesome. Yeah, that's that's been my experience. See, oh, let's go for the easy, <laughs> easy no, applause. Yeah, you got him. Um, so. In terms of you know where you go to get inspiration, like we had, we'd had a, a brief discussion. Like I don't really read comics, and I, right. I, I don't even really read web comics. I'm like too busy making comics mm -hmm. to 
be to actually like be enmeshed in the medium that I ostensibly work in. Ostensibly, right? But theoretically, like typically I when you're in an industry, yeah, yeah. I mean, typically when you're in an industry, like you sort of get enmeshed in that industry, and right. it's like I, I've you. If we were to, if I was to walk through the expo floor with you, people would know who you were. I mean, you would know them, and you have a lot of relationships in that. And for me, I mostly just like look at a text editor and do this, right? And that's most of my, that's you know, most of my engagement with the art form. So you had said that you would look sort of outside of games themselves for inspiration to make games. Like, yeah. where are you looking to get that? to get what you need? Um, so, I mean, I play games. So I do play a lot of games. I mean, I was a gamer oh, yeah. before a game designer, but I don't, uh, I actually don't draw inspiration from games at all. Uh, at least I don't think so. What's well, probably I mean, not safe to do. Well, I'm not really worried about that so much. Yeah. It's like, I mean, the, the mind is what it is, right? It's going to take you where it takes you. And if you're honest about your craft, you're just going to follow your yeah. inspiration wherever it goes. But um, generally speaking, when I play a game that I really like, the, my first thought is like, oh, great, I don't have to make a game like this. Th that, that's great, right? Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a relief. You're yeah. Like, Whoo! Yeah, oh, like, wow. I, this, here's a great experience. Though. I don't need to make anything like this. It used to be back at, it, when I was a younger designer, a little like, more, more punk and angry, right? Oh. Uh, like, you, you wanted to make the counter example? Well, I was you wanted out. to do I, the game correctly? I, I, no, a game that pissed me off. I'm like, I'm like, I played, I'm like, oh God, like, the, no, I'm gonna make this right, right now. That is, um, yeah, like, that's. There's nothing, it, it nothing me. like youth and hubris, right? It me, yeah, for sure. Um, the, uh, I'm not really motivated that way anymore, so the, um, the thing I've, the only thing I've learned about inspiration, right, is that you don't seek it, it finds you. Um, the only thing that, I believe in exposure therapy, 100%, so I just, I go out, I talk to smart people. Um, I hang around with. Uh, I hang around with smart people. I travel a lot. Um, you I just want to pollinate. I sort of. I mean, I just want to. I want to do things that are uncomfortable. Um, I mean, to me, because I'm a, uh, a real um, uh, what, gamer, I guess. Like, like <laughs> for <laughs> like, lack of a better I, term. I, 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 I like my comfort zone. I like. Uh, I like playing Diablo at night. And like, <laughs> like, like, like. You like to. You're a man who loves to click. I love. I definitely love to click. Mm -hmm. uh, I, in fact, I, I enjoyed uh, of the cow clicking for <laughs> for quite a while. Um, you clicked cows. I did click. I, I in fact, I even clicked. Uh, what was Peter Molyneux's game? The one where you like you clicked uh, like two hundred million times to get to the center oh. of the the Tootsie Roll, and I found out it was a, some other game. Um, yeah. That, that I mean, it was great. Um, but <laughs> I mean, I, I, I liked I, clicking. I mean, I think I I tapped. I mean, maybe two or three hundred times, and then I think I deleted the app. Like, there's, it's like there's certain things, there's certain types of behaviors that designers want me to do, mm -hmm. and as soon as I see that, as soon as I detect that they're trying to make me do something like that, I, I get physically angry. Right. You're not alone, by the way. That's why, in my opinion, why the, these, uh, these Blankville games ultimately end up failing, right? Because they were Skinner boxes. And the thing that makes Skinner boxes not work on humans, I hope, is that uh, like, once you see the box, once you see the mechanisms, it is literally like waking up like you're, whoa, I'm Keanu Reeves. What the fuck is this, right? Like, yeah. I'm not in the Matrix anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm, hate this place. I'm covered in goo, and I don't have any hair. That's right. Right. Um, but I mean, but I, I've had that experience in like, World of Warcraft is a great example. World of Warcraft. Don't you be dissing my World of Warcraft. I would never, I would never diss World of Warcraft. Okay. I don't, I want to live. I want to continue living. Um, I want to go to there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right? But it burned a part of my mind out. Oh, me too. Well, it, it didn't burn apart. It just, it, it settled into my veins. Like, it's yeah. part of my DNA now. Yeah. There's, so if, if I even try to play a game like that, like I've, I've tried to jump into other ones. The only, the only MMO that has worked for me since then has been, was Wildstar, and Wildstar wasn't long for this world, right? Yeah, yeah. Again, ex, I mean, ex-Blizzard talent, I think, like, uh, but much more sort of like action-oriented mm -hmm. gameplay, and so right. uh, it got around some of the basic interaction loops because mm -hmm. it was so interactive by comparison. Right. But there's certain types of behaviors. Like, I cannot, 
It doesn't even matter what they call this leaf or this ore. If somebody wants me to get ore or a leaf, I will uninstall it. Like as, as, as soon, and it's like, I'll, I'll get that first leaf and then I'll be like, wait a second. Wait a second. So we started this conversation think I, I started this conversation thinking that you were my target audience. I don't know anymore, man. Like, like <coughs> I don't know who you are anymore. I like I like I like getting ores and leaves and, and kill ten rats is awesome. I felt that in my teeth. <laughs> so 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 let me let me let me tell you a little bit about something about kill ten rats. Um, um uh, I want to talk to you about Grind for a minute, right? Yes, I would so, love to talk about Grind. Oh my God, I love Grind. I mean, I, I oh, mm, 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 mm. Um, it, it, it's not a four-letter word, right? It's a five-letter no, word. No, exactly. Right? You're not wrong. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> uh, <coughs> yeah. um, um, no, so, um, so we're going to get a little philosophical here. No, I apologize. I, I would but love to hear let, this. Let's, 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 let's pull this back a little bit, right, and apply it not, not only to, to, to games, but to, uh, or to the craft, but to life in general, right? Yeah. Um, uh, this is why I love Grind, TM. Yeah. Uh, when, when you are, when you're young and you're trying and, and you're figuring out your way in the world, you're trying to figure out what, what, what am, what am I here for? What am I supposed to do? What's my, either my job, my calling, right. what am I, what was I placed here to do? Um, we all go through that to some degree, right? And some of us are lucky enough to, to do that for a living, but for sure. the, um, when navigating, I found a shortcut for navigating this and this is where grind comes in. Hmm. Um, so navigating that field, um, every profession, every calling, every craft that exists, uh, is uh, is is input output like all games right but but it's a 80 20 thing 80 uh, 80 percent of every job especially the ones that are uh, that are Im important God I almost said important but like but we know what you mean we know what you mean um, the, they're 80 percent grind and when you identify what the grind is in that profession in that job and you enjoy that, and that and that's the source of your joy rather than the 20 percent high feedback that is probably what you're meant to do right so i'll give you a couple examples um when i was young when i was 14 years old um i wanted to be a rock star of course i wanted to be a rock star um i was 14 years old i grew up listening to uh, I, I grew up on iron maiden judas priest uh the black sabbath that was, Dio. Those are, uh, holy diver that's yeah. right um the um i wanted to Dude, be those horns came up so fast oh yeah I think the horns are all. I think that you have to actively I'm maintain always, a fist or a soft hand. I think that the horns are your natural state. I'm always part horn. That's yeah. right. Um, I wanted to. Uh, 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 okay, boomer moment. When, when yeah. I was 12 years old, I wanted to be Paul Diano when I grew up. So who's Paul Diano? You ask. He was the original singer of Iron Maiden. Um, not the Iron Maiden, you know, not like Number of the Beast. Like ah! he was the the punky Italian guy with hair like mine, right? Because um, hashtag representation, yeah, representation matters. Damn it, that would have been so smooth. Man, that would have been so clean. Um, wow. I was like, but that guy fucking looks like me, and yeah. he's rocking out in these leather pants and the stuff. For like, sure. Like, so uh, I, I want to be that guy, right? So I studied the living shit out of uh, not so much music, uh, music at all. I mean, I, I played guitar and all that stuff, but I studied the business. Right? What is the business oh, like? What's it like to? <clears throat> I was hoping you were going to say I began to worship Satan seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I began to really invest in, in altars and candles and well, bats. We're, well, we're three quarters of the way through our conversation. I don't know if we're going to get that part. <laughs> but um, uh, anyway, so, so the, you, the case, that's all, already. So you're 12, right. and you're like, okay, what is the business substructure right. of, well, so, of weaponizing and monetizing teen rebellion? <laughs> like that's that's no. not where I was at. I just I just started playing guitar. Right. So the, uh, and that's the difference, I guess. Well, so I'm 47 years old right now, and I'm describing my 12 year old sense of uh, from a 47 year old but perspective. I was ass. not that smart, right? Oh. But no. But what, I mean, intuitively, I was like, uh, I was like, what's it like to be a rock star? How does it work? What, how does it work? Yeah. Right. And um, I was looking through it, and, I, and of course, I started a band with all my friends. Yes. Um, and no, we're, hold on, no, don't, we're not. No, hey, hey. Oh shit. Okay, so I need the name of the band. 
Ooh. Oh no, is it not okay? I'm going to tell you the name of the band. I, that's what I want. That's all what right. I've been asking for. All right. So remember, everyone, your first game is terrible. Your first everything is terrible. Oh, right? No. Uh, <laughs> all right. Here we go. All right. So uh, my first band's name was called The Zed Foundation. The Zed, I don't hate this. Written, like, uh, written in Megadeth font and foundation written in Iron Maiden font, and the written like uh, written in the same font as uh, Killers from, Al um, from Alice Cooper. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's hardcore. Now, uh, so, it, uh, of course, we fucking sucked, right? It was everything we did was terrible. 12, yeah, yeah. I mean, we wrote the... songs about bears, and it was this. It was, yeah. Um, uh, Bear Attack was my number one single. <laughs> um, what was the B-side on Bear Attack? I didn't know what B-sides were. Oh. I, um, I, I, I'd love to have a, a pithy answer for you. Anyway, yeah. so, um, but we, we, as we started, um, as we started practicing, I started uh, watching, um, at the time, much music. I come from Toronto, which is why we're the oh, Zed Foundation, yeah. right? I'm familiar. Um, wow, yeah, Toronto. Um, <laughs> Toronto's awesome. Um, we, um, we were practicing and stuff, and the, when, I'm gonna go back to my present self, right? I, yeah. I realized noetically at the time, the grind, what is the, the grind of that job? The grind, if you wanna be a rock star, right? The, the actual grind, you, you might think the grind is touring, it's not, right? The, the, um, that's the feedback, that's the, that's the high feedback. When you go out there, it's the reason you do it. You go out there to perform your, excel, your, 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 your excellent self and you get that feedback from the well, crowd, well, yeah, right? it, it can't be grind. The grind is rehearsal. Yeah. Right. The grind is rehearsal, and that's that's group rehearsal and solo practice. If you now to to uh, to a lot of people who get in the music business, rehearsal is the is a means to an end. But for the ones that the, the lifers, the ones who really have this in their bones, that is the mean that the, that is the job. Like you go you go to a place when you are rehearsing. You go to a place when you're grinding, and that um, and it doesn't. You can pass hours, whatever, um, without. Uh, I mean, you achieve you achieve flow. I mean, that's what uh, yeah, that's ga the, game designers talk about. This that's the term all the time. Um, but you stay in that state, and you never grow out of it, and you never want to go away. So I fucking hated rehearsal. Rehearsal was stupid. Um, so I just wanted to I just wanted to get out there and scream like uh, about bears attacking people yeah. in the woods. Like <laughs> yeah, you so, want to swing the microphone around on the cable. Uh, uh, but no, no, not really. No, dude, it's got to be with the, you know, with the V pose and the... Oh, right, right, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with the V pose, it provides good support. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? That's what it's about. Right, really. absolutely. It, what, what if you're rocking and there is an earthquake? V pose. That, you're ready to go. You're, you're light years ahead of me. I on thought this about one. this a lot. <laughs> you have. So, um, so, that's the, uh, so that grind was not for me. Um, I'm going to pretend that I was smart enough as a 12-year-old to go, oh, yeah, this is clearly not for me. I do not like the grind of this, right? Well, no, but, but it, it wouldn't even have to be conscious. It's intuitive, You right? would recognize at some level. Well, I mean, the easiest way to recognize if something isn't for us is if we don't do it. Right. And it's right. actually pretty straightforward. Right. If we don't, it's like for me, I had a fantasy for a very, very long time mm -hmm. that, uh -oh. oh, no, it's okay. It's deeply shameful. Did I mean, it involve it, bears? It, it's not okay insofar as like it feels good, but it's okay because I've at least discussed it before, and it's not. It's uh, it's just, it's a scab I've torn off before, basically. My God, that's a lot of lead up. Yeah. Well, no, it's like it's like well, everybody thinks it's like. Everybody thinks. I think. I thought. I'm dead inside. Um, no, I thought that I would be able to write a book. Me too. Yeah. No. Lord of the Frings, <laughs> right? French fries, onion rings, the Why greatest not? combo ever known. This is, this is the apex. You achieve Frings, you alone can save Middle Earth from Sauron. I, I don't hate it. Um, let's talk about it. Um, but, but no, I, but the truth is I don't, like that is a type of, that is a type of grind that I can't, I can't commit myself to it. Right, so what is the grind as a writer? Uh, well, it, it depends. It's not putting the words on the page. <clears throat> no. Right? It's the rewrite. Well, it, it's the edit. Right. right. Well, not even the edit. It's the, it's, the, it's the third, fourth, fifth iteration of rewriting. Right? But even yeah. before you 
try to polish it. Right, right. And so what is this? So in game design, the, the grind is, oh, yeah. Oh, well, to my mind, it yep. seems like the grind would be tuning. Nope. No, it's not? Nope. It isn't like the spreadsheet full of the numbers? I know if nope. I saw that, I would throw up. Uh, it, it, uh, I, I kind of like it. Um, I, I mean, kind of <laughs> like it. Uh, no, the grind is playtesting. Oh, it's the amount, oh, because it's the amount of time. So the grind is the phys not, the, not the prototyping before, not the tuning that happens afterward. It's the act of bringing the game to a table, humiliating yourself in front of uh, strangers oh, and yes, friends, yes. and um, uh, having, your, having your, uh, your life's work, your years of experience distilled into a plastic nugget where... Uh, that everybody looks at and goes, wow, that is about as fun as yeah. shaving my back with a cheese grater, right? Yeah, like, and, it's, and it's, like, it's like, I played a lot of your other actual games. Actual quote. Yeah, I played a lot of your other games and they were great. And well, now you bring me this. Well, so the, so the thing is, right, so I have this, I have this uh, uh, practiced thing that I like to tell people about what game design is, right? When people are like, oh, you get to play games? So like, yeah, you, yes, I do. I get, oh, so uh, as a not, game designer, yeah. I, I'm... I, I come up with neat ideas and I make fucking shitty games um, that I play over and over and over and over and over again until they stop sucking and then I don't play them anymore. That's the ape like, like the, that's the apex game design loop. Right. Is that because these games like would I be correct in saying you don't play a lot of Quarriers? Uh, oh, well, now that it's published, I do, sure. Oh, okay, but there's the window. It's like once it actually comes out, now it's okay again. Once a year or two has passed, sure, yes. Yeah. Um, so how do you like this as a definition? The grind is the portion of a process which cannot be reduced. You are, see, it's almost like you, you, you are a wordsmith for a living. That's exactly right. It's the part that, that you can't obviate. That's right. It must, it, you have to contend well, with it's it. It's the basically. part where if you shortcut, you oh. are absolutely will create broken whatever. Right. Right. Your, your, your end product will suck. God, that works for me. Oh, also, um, speaking of couriers. Uh-oh. Um, so I can't escape. I know the dragon is broken. <laughs> I can't escape. It's fine. I can't escape a PAX without spending probably, I mean... Let's say $100 on dice. Let's say. <laughs> just as a nice round number. I'm not drawing it from any specific experience. I'm just saying <laughs> it's in the same way that like, if you were to enter a casino, it's a wise person enters a casino with a specific dollar amount in mind. That's how I feel about dice at a PAX. Right? And what I like about Quarriers is that it allows me to iterate it allows me to purchase the same dice again and again. This is a game about, functionally speaking, about buying dice. It's very kind of you to say. Well, I mean, I really, really like it. I mean, I, I do have a, I have a question about it, though. I mean, have some of my games of Quarriers end with the players simply throwing handfuls of dice at each other instead of using the, what you might call the traditional rules? Oh, sure. Um, and, does, and is that, does, does that have your blessing? Is that also an acceptable? Oh, the, well, I mean, that's the dexterity variant, right? Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> I, well, so, dude, one, you know, once, we, once we publish a game, it's not our game anymore. It's your game, right? You do whatever you want with that game. I mean, sure, I'd like it if you played by our rules. We spent a lot of time engineering as fun an experience as possible. But, but like, no... Like, People, gamers, anybody is not a monolith, right? Everybody's right. going to, um, and especially as uh, we're get, uh, increasing in sophistication, uh, and gamers today are so much more sophisticated than they were when I was growing They're up. Hyper literate, like, right? Oh my God! Like the average gamer, I could pick one. I'm going to pick you right there. I can't see you, but I, th there you are. I could ask you, uh, I could ask you random questions about game design, and I'll bet you, you'd be able to answer more articulately, completely, and uh, with a greater knowledge base than most designers the, of my time. Uh, absolutely, right? The, Wait, did the water levels risen, essentially? Absolutely. Right? Like, my son's first game was Minecraft. Yep. That's pretty fucking crazy. Like, mm -hmm. his expectations for interaction and long-term play are at a very, very high level. That's right. You know what I mean? Um, 
So I wanted to ask you something as we, because somehow we have been doing this for like an hour. Oh, that seems hello. hard to believe to me. Um, but I, I guess I guess we literally did the same thing last night, so it's probably not too crazy. Right now so, we have an audience that we hope we did not bore to tears. No, no, no. It's they've been okay. They've been okay. I think. Um, so we we our discussions uh, off the stage ranged pretty deep uh, and pretty broad. We covered a number of topics, um, and you said that uh, some of them important topics. Um, but you you had said when we were uh, talking last night to that basically you've been asked every question. And so sometimes during the course of an interview, oh, here we go. just to survive the interview, you will have to rephrase their question to them just so that you can make it through, basically, so that it's new or interesting, right? Right. Well, so I don't provide the same canned answer that Yeah, exactly. Other times. Because as we both described, it's just like, if ever we feel like we're repeating ourselves, like we feel like we're being inauthentic, like we can't actually do that. What you're saying is whenever we feel like we're repeating ourselves, yeah. we feel like we're being inauthentic. Yeah. I feel physically sick. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but the, given, given the range of uh, your interests and concerns broadly that we discussed, I mean, why? Like, what is it that what is it that makes you create like another system? Like for me, it's a, it's almost, it's something like a compulsion. It's something right. that I physically feel like I have to do. Right. And if I don't do it, I'll be incredibly unhappy. For the long time, for a long time, I would like go on vacation mm -hmm. and I would be miserable the entire time. Oh yeah. Because I didn't understand that I didn't want a vacation from writing. Right. I wanted a vacation from work. Yep. Right, and that's mm -hmm. what I actually needed. And so when I started writing on vacation, I started actually being able to have vacations. That's right. So what is it, given this robust catalog, I mean, how many games do you have coming out next year? Uh, four? Yeah, that's a couple. What is it that makes you, why do you keep going back to it? Is there a, is there mm -hmm. like a, is there a game, you, do you feel like you'll get to a point where you found it? Oh, hell no. This is just basically a process, right? Right, so I have two answers for you. Um, oh, we have a minute? Jesus. No, no, um, Mike will accept it if we go a couple of minutes longer. He's yeah, just back take there that, waiting. Mike. He'll be okay. He, he'll right. be, he's fine. He's just, he's just on Twitter. It's fine. Okay. Um, so I have two answers for you. Yeah. Um, just please keep me on track. So yeah, I got you. Answer number one. So, um, so why am I a game designer, right? Uh, and I know I'm rephrasing your question. You, it was a very good question. I'm just still rephrasing I'm not mad. Um, so why am I a game designer? Um, so it, this took me a, week, a while to figure out, right? To me, it, it was sort of a compulsion, right? But um, I've, uh, now I've studied a lot of other art forms, a lot. Um, Stand-up comedy being one of them. Uh, it's probably the one I st studied the most because um, there's so many parallels. It's unbelievable, uh, except I'm not funny in any way whatsoever. Um, the, uh, so uh, I have what I describe um, the, the game designer's weakness. And that, mm. that's where everything stems from. I am deeply uncomfortable in any social situation where people are not having fun. If we're not oh. fundamentally having fun on some level, I'm really uncomfortable. I don't want to. That's wanna... the stand-up comedian thing too. Right. They exactly. Have right. To fill that, they need they the have laugh. to fill that social space. They need the laugh. They need that feedback. So um, to me, the, the, to, the, when I realized that, when I when I realized I started tapping into that. I was, um, and just started saying, you know, and there was a period about seven or eight years ago where I said, fuck it, I'm just going to make games only for me now, right? Um, you and, get like that. And, and hope the market agrees. Um, and that basically stemmed from that weakness. I just want to, like, I want to fill that, I want to fill the void. Wherever fun is not, I want to add fun on some level, right? Yeah. And then to stop worrying about, like, being too broad or whatever. That's a really sophisticated right? goal. So, the, the, so there's that, right? Um, the, so the, that's, I think that's why I do what I do. I just, it's out of a weakness that I have to constantly compensate for. Um, the, um, there was a second part of your question that was very intelligently phrased. I'm going to phrase it badly back to you. Nice. Right? Cool. Um, what, so what, that was a great answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, deep down. <laughs> um, so... Um, what, what makes me seek out the next game, or what, right. what, 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 like, 
what is it about the next game that I work on or whatever. So um, I, the, uh, I, have, I feel like my career can actually be very, very accurately summed up or like, like the, my, uh, my version of my, my utopian version of my career can be summed up in the last minutes, in the last five minutes of uh, the movie Serenity. Um, which, uh, spoiler alert, I mean, it's been 10 years, so if you haven't seen it, fuck you, right? Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, in the last five minutes of Serenity, the Firefly movie, um, uh, was one of, it's one of my favorite pieces of Hollywood schlock I've ever seen. I love it all so much. Um, so, the, the, I love the movie, but the last five minutes of that movie made me ugly cry like a tiny, tiny baby. Oh, I, I was right? in a preview showing for that, where it's basically like, brown coats or go home right like end to end beginning to the back and it was it was awful right the well, sound in this place with the lamentations right right well right so i didn't even subscribe to any of that but the last five minutes of that movie were um and it's you know it's not even a spoiler but so uh, the, so they they the story's over and uh, Captain Mal Reynolds and River are sitting there in the, in the cockpit of Serenity, right? And, um, and you know, River's this, uh, this IQ 800 billion uh, uh, Mentat that uh, is, has learned how to f uh, fly the ship and she's asking, uh, she's asking Mal, like, what does it take, right? What does it take? Uh, uh, and, you know, he's like, oh, you've heard this story before. She's like, tell it again, right? Like all classic stories. Right. And this is the, I know it's a sappy and it's it, whatever, but uh, it's love, right? Love keeps her afloat. Um, you can't, uh, the, there's a line in that, I'm going to butcher it because I'm not Joss Whedon, but the line is, um, uh, all the math in the verse will not keep this thing, uh, will not keep a ship that you don't love afloat. Right. That is game design to me, 100%. If I don't love it, if I don't love it, if I, if I don't leave a piece of myself behind in a game that, we, um, that I'm working on, then I don't really see a need to publish it. Right? I don't see a need to do it. I, I've made those games. I've made lots of those. But nowadays, that's my number one pr uh, criteria. So right? game design is your means of uh, reproduction? <laughs> Did I get you in one? <laughs> You, you got me, right? Well, well yeah, but I don't, the problem is I don't love all my kids, right? Like, I don't love like, all my like, kids. Like, it's fine. That's normal. So, like, so, yeah, sure. So, imagine, yes, it's like reproduction. How about this? If, you wanna, if we want to put a, 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 a Penny Arcade twist on it, right? Oh. Game design. It's like reproduction, but fuck it. <laughs> Eric Lang, everybody. <laughs>